functional connectivity um, is altered um, and there's an increased connectivity um, to the uh, visual cortex and to the default mode network you know what your brain is thinking and doing while you're doing nothing um, and there's decreased func uh, functional connectivity to the frontal cortex to be able to sort out friend or foe um, probably a, a, an evolutionary advantage to having social anxiety was that you know me and my kin were the the sentries of the tribe you know you want to put us out there watching the trail and if some you know fellows are walking down the path and scowling you know and it's probably a good idea for somebody who's a little um, uh, scared of that to say hey maybe we better leave they look like the people that beat us up and stole our meat so let's go um, and this was an interesting study showing um, they were they were actually able to use the LIBO with social anxiety scale um, and correlated it to um, uh, connectivity um, with uh, these particular regions um, so you can actually uh, demonstrate that and there were difference between the the left amygdala and the right amygdala so here's um, something called cognitive bias training and in cognitive bias training what you're looking for is the the person who's smiling down here um, and so what you uh, what you do is you present um, uh, a series of uh, faces uh, most of that are, are all but one or are, are, are not smiling they're angry or disgusted or something like that and in this particular study that what they actually did was they had the people play music that they liked and and they would put them through this and you can actually um, there's a link there in this that you can you can uh, click on and play um, and if you pick the person who's smiling the music continues if you click on somebody who is scowling the music stops so it's a, a reinforcement there well it's actually doing two things for you it's getting you to focus on people that are smiling and not focus on people who are not and um, one of the the early tricks that I would use to help me when doing public speaking was to tell a joke even if it was a bad joke people go oh that's terrible you know they were still smiling at me um, the other thing that happens in social anxiety is that you don't accommodate you know accommodation is where your senses kind of get toned down so that they're not constantly being bombarded you know you're you're probably not aware until I mention it of your underwear or your tongue or your, your shoes um, because your brain kind of screens that out so it doesn't drive you crazy uh, but in um, uh, in functional brain imaging when they showed uh, pictures to uh, uh, behavioral inhibited uh, children um, they would show them different pictures and when they uh, and then they began to repeat themselves so that they would kind of uh, extinguish it and so when they saw the familiar faces the even the inhibited and uninhibited brains acted the same way but when a truly novel face showed up uh, and not negative facial expression but truly novel the, the inhibited kids amygdalas lit up like a pair of headlights so this is a confidence interval graph and they're looking at something called the standardized mean difference and these were the different treatments uh, from the waiting list which did nothing uh, for social anxiety and placebo um, and everything from um, you know exercising self-help groups anticonvulsants um, and with um, uh, from minus minus two to minus one uh, or basically everything to the left of the uh, you know this first line the minus one um, was considered uh, good and out here would be uh, excellent but nothing really reached that um, you can see that combined con cognitive behavioral therapy individual ones um, uh, did the best um, interestingly the the MAO inhibitors did quite well uh, as well um, 
anti convulsants were not so good. So here's an interesting uh, study that, that suggested that maybe um, antidepressants decrease the effectiveness. You remember the interoceptive desensitization we talked about in, in uh, panic disorder. So they studied people and they were randomized to re receive either Zoloft or sertraline or placebo for 24 weeks uh, with or without the addition of exposure therapy. Um, and they looked at people and what they found was that um, exposure therapy alone yielded a further improvement during follow-up where there were, um, whereas exposure therapy with sertraline or sertraline alone showed a tendency toward deterioration after the completion. So um, they were building muscles there. Um, and um, so there's a, an interesting digital health community called the Mighty, um, and they uh, they are helpful. Um, and there's the the link for this, and there's an interesting uh, uh, YouTube channel called College Humor, and I think they really nailed what social anxiety is like. The doctors said it was just a bizarre case of shingles. Wow, that's yeah. terrible. I know. I'm gonna go refill that ice. No, no, no. Stop bringing up your sad shingles story. Oh no, anxiety. Why are you here? I really wanted to go to this party alone. And now you're just standing here? Get your phone out, look busy. What the hell do you think you're doing? Do you want people to see you doing that? Doing what? Eating? Yes. Oh my god, people are gonna see how you eat. You've been looking at that alone for way too long. People are gonna realize that you only know the host like some kind of a weird loner. Enter a conversation. Stop. Can't you see they don't want to talk to you? Yeah, I guess. Stop. They clearly don't want to talk to you either. Okay. Are you fucking crazy? He doesn't want to be cornered by you. And what would you even say? It'd be so awkward. Well, I'm sorry, Anxiety, but everyone seems off limits. Hi, I'm Zach. This is my friend Siobhan. I'm Katie. How do you guys know Cynthia? I met Cynthia. They hate what you're wearing and they know you're lame. You're gonna ruin this conversation. Get out now. Say you're hungry. Hmm. I'm hungry. Oh, me too. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a plate. Oh, I'll come with. You idiot. Now it looks like you've latched onto them. Uh, actually, I'm not. Never mind. Great. You left them to stand in a corner. Now they think you're rude. Your third drink? People are gonna think you're an alcoholic. Yeah, I'm just like, red solo cups. Why are they so popular? <sighs> Terrible topic, but thank God you're finally talking to someone. Wait. That's her landlord. He just responded to a noise complaint. You shouldn't be talking to him. Hey, have any of you guys? Sorry, guys. Hi. 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 Does anybody here Hi. have a vacation story that's, that could be fun? Anybody? No one is talking to you. You don't belong here. You should just go home right now. Hey, is, has anybody here been to Iceland ever? It's a joke. Show them you can laugh at yourself. And watch me trip, and watch me bang me, and watch me trip, trip, and watch me bang me. I'm not with her. Hi, it's Katie Mervich from College Humor. If you want to subscribe, click over here. And for more fun stuff, click over here. And if you want access to College Humor's secret site, make sure you send your social security number, your credit card information, and your mother's maiden name in a private message to me. So psychotherapy, um, CBT works well. 
um, acceptance and commitment therapy, mindfulness, um, uh, in addition, help. Desensitization is critical, not necessarily interoceptive, um, unless there's also panic disorder. Um, it entails graduated exercise to induce that. And when somebody is filling out the uh, uh, either a Leibowitz or a social anxiety, uh, social phobia scale, um, you can actually use that as a hierarchy, starting with, you know, the smallest uh, uh, bothers like the, the one on the the three-point scale or you know don't start with a three um, you know just raising your hand walking into a room where people are seated and then using like I use the clear thinking um, to have people you know predict what they think are going to happen um, Ellen Hendrickson talks about one of the homework and, and let me say to you if you have agoraphobia if you have a patient with agoraphobia or sociophobia and they're seeing a therapist and there's no homework, I would be very concerned that they're not doing effective treatment. Homework is, is absolutely essential. Um, so, and, and she said, make the uh, when such and such happens, it'll become obvious that I am blank. Uh, like when I'm at a birthday party, it'll become obvious I have no social skills forced to make small talk, it'll be obvious my mind is going blank, and uh, the college humor uh, example was pretty good. Um, so you got to counteract these overgeneralizations, and then ask yourself, well, how bad would it really be if, if you know, you, you ask somebody uh, for directions, they go, I don't know, or turned around. Um, ask people what the odds of that, and uh, um, you know, it's like flying with somebody who is convinced that turbulence means the plane's going to turn over and go and, and crash. And I go, how many planes do you know of have crashed from turbulence? Well, not any. It's like, well, then why are you concerned that it's going to happen to you? Um, asking people how you'd cope and embracing yourself with kindness and say, well, you know, things would happen. So uh, I really, really like these uh, three graphs and, and uh, Dr. Hendrickson said these are the only graphs in my book and if you if you look at the first one here um, it, she's she's showing that you know on the y-axis uh, chilling and all the way up to freaking out or you could do you know one to ten anxiety here and this is time starting with a few seconds a minute or so in a few minutes and so when somebody with social anxiety does something that uh, puts them in a situation where they're feeling socially anxious, their anxiety goes way high. And then the typical way that they've been dealing with this, well, I'll just avoid it, you know. So it's like um, going to a party, knocking on the door, and then running away before anybody answers it. And the anxiety drops down precipitously and levels off. And what you want to do is you want to encourage people to be brave and stick with it. In other words, the desensitization. And so what happens is the anxiety is going to go up for a few seconds. But after a minute or so, it's going to start going down. And after a few minutes, it's going to go down even farther. And then here is um, what it's really going to look like with progress is here's the curve of the first try, second, third, going down, and then it's just kind of a molehill. Um, I once had a, a lady at uh, in our substance abuse facility, and, and phobias are very context-driven. She was a flight attendant, and, you know, she had very little anxiety uh, when she's serving uh, food to people or helping them and helping put up uh, luggage and things like that but the moment they landed and she went out on the terminal and people would come up and say hey where's a good place to eat what's good you know what's 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 a fun thing to do in this town she would freeze up and uh, we were doing group therapy and I said she'd been there about five days and I said one to ten how it's group therapy for you uh you know it's about a seven I said well, what was it the first day so oh, it was about a nine I said well how'd you get it down to a seven I 
expected her to, you know, describe this kind of, you know, well, I kept doing it and desensitized, but she said, well, I, I, my group goes in order. So I get there five minutes early and sit in the first chair so I can get it over with. And I said, well, that's pretty clever. What would you think about sitting in the second chair? She said, oh, just thinking about it makes me anxious. I said, well, one to 10, uh, but a nine. I said, what do you think will happen after a few times? She'll probably drop down to seven. Uh, and sit in the, the third chair. Then the fourth chair and the fifth chair. And by the time she left in 30 days, she had no anxiety talking in group. The interesting thing is, three years later, she relapsed and came back. And I said, I remember you. How's that social anxiety? She said, you remember how you told me I kept needing to practice? And I go, yeah. She goes, I didn't. It's still bad. And I said, well, let's start again. So uh, here's examples of desensitization. Um, uh, Dr. Hendrickson has a website and you can actually, uh, uh, she can, um, she'll send you some, some assignments to do by email and some suggestions, uh, asking somebody to mind grabbing you a coffee, um, walking by the Boy Scouts trying to sell you candy popcorn, um, flavored popcorn and saying, no, thank you, but having a good luck. Um, so one of the, um, the the early people who uh, really helped people was uh, Dale Carnegie. And he wrote this book back in 1936 called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And he's, he, he talked about make people like you by, you know, becoming interested in people, smiling a lot, remembering that person's name, being a very good listener and talking in terms of other people's interests, make them feel important. And he, he tells a story about um, a botanist that he met at a dinner party and he had never met a botanist and and he listened and he acted very interested um and uh he said um uh, uh at this dinner party he said there were other guests dozens of guests i violated all the canons of courtesy ignored everybody else and talked for hours to the botanist midnight came and i said good night to everyone and departed the botanist turned to our host and paid me several flattering compliments I was most stimulating, he said. I was this, I was that, and he ended by saying, I was a most interesting conversationalist. And so, you know, you can tell people, act like you're a reporter or a, um, a journalist and, and interview people. And, you know, where are you from? You married, you got any kids? What do you like to do for fun? Do you like football? Um, and at the end of the evening, the person may think that you're very interesting, even though you've said next to nothing about yourself. Um, and that's one way to do it. So essentially, um, to sum it up, the best way to overcome these is with effort. Uh, whether you have agoraphobia, panic attacks, social anxiety, uh, becoming an expert on it, uh, learning to breathe, uh, finding a good therapist who does cognitive behavioral therapy, and especially with uh, interoceptive desensitization and breathing retraining in the case of panic attacks and agoraphobia. So I hope that helps. Uh, thank you for listening um, and good luck out there.